New Year, New Laws. I'm Cristian Benavides with a look at what's new this 2024. The first antique mall in the Tupelo area celebrates a milestone. We'll check in at Relics and tell you how the economy has been impacting business. I'm Allie Martin. We'll have that story straight ahead on WCBI News. Telling your story, WCBI News at 6 starts now. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Keely Shields and this is WCBI News at 6. The new year isn't even a day old yet and Octavala County deputies are already investigating a death. Deputies responded to a call at 2451 Artesia Road around 2.30 in the morning. 40-year-old Calvin DeMond Tate was pronounced dead at the scene. He was suffering from a single gunshot wound. Deputies arrested Langston Jackie Spencer, 28, of Startful at the scene. Langston is being held in the Octavaha County Jail on a charge of manslaughter. Langston's initial appearance is expected tomorrow in Octavaha County Justice Court. Bond has not yet been set in the case. Octavaha County Deputy Coroner Billy Miller tells WCBI that Tate's body has been sent to Pearl for an autopsy. The new year has ushered in hundreds of new laws now in effect around the country. Nearly half of the states raised their minimum wage and several states enacted new gun restrictions. CBS's Christian Benavides breaks it down. New laws in the new year served up pay raises for about 10 million Americans, many working in food services and child care. 22 states passed laws raising the minimum wage. I will help me with my son. He's about to graduate from high school. He wants to go to college now. In California, it's now illegal to carry a gun in most public places, even with a concealed carry permit. It's one of several states with new gun regulations. Nothing about a red flag law interferes with your right to the Second Amendment. While Minnesota passed a new red flag law allowing guns to be taken from people deemed an imminent threat, and Illinois banned semi-automatic rifles and high-capacity magazines. Other laws focus on hot-button issues like gender-affirming care. Children are not mature enough to drive, they're not mature enough to buy alcohol or cigarettes or to get a tattoo. Why in the world would we allow them to remove perfectly healthy reproductive organs? Idaho, Louisiana, and West Virginia have blocked minors from access to puberty blockers and hormone therapy. Here in Florida, it's already a law for drivers to move over a lane for stopped emergency vehicles. But now the move over law will apply when any vehicle is on the side of the road with its hazards on. And a warning for porch pirates. Anyone caught stealing packages left outside in Pennsylvania could now face felony charges. Christian Benavides, CBS News, Miami. California's new gun law has already been challenged. Last month, a U.S. district judge blocked the law from taking effect. But over the weekend, a federal appeal court put the judge's ruling on hold. Over the weekend here in the deep south, a cold front came through when that made conditions today a little bit chilly and definitely breezy. Now that front is situated just off of the Atlantic coast and a high pressure system is moving in and going to keep conditions a little bit clearer tonight and tomorrow. Temperature wise, we have dropped middle to upper 30s, 34 Oxford and Tupelo, 38 West Point and at the Air Force Base. We're 37 in Aberdeen and 39 in Starkville continuing to drop through the rest of the night heading towards the middle 20s. So make sure to bundle up before you head out there. Keely. During the New Year's holiday, we will be putting on a cap for all the winter festivities. It's also a time of year when some believe what you eat can mean good luck in the coming year. The dishes usually consist of black eyed peas, sweet potatoes, greens and pork chops. Our Kamari Hamer was in Columbus and Startful and talked with restaurant owners about why those dishes are so important during this time of year. He joins us live in the studio with more. Keely, many people believe that what they eat today can affect their fortune for the rest of the year. And there are a few schools of thoughts on what you should eat and why. During this time of year, most people are getting prepared for a holiday tradition. Owner of Helen's Kitchen, Kabir Kareem and Lee Peoples, who owns the camp house in Starkville, say certain foods have special meaning. New Year's Day lunch and dinner is traditionally, you got pork, greens, and peas. Uh, your pork represents your posterity, so you know the pig is always Rooting in the ground, they're always rooting forward, so that's where that comes from. That's why a lot of Southerners eat pork on New Year's Day. 
Green is for uh, money, income, uh, and then peas are for your luck. So you know, it's just a traditional southern meal. You eat your, your greens, beans, and, and pork on New Year's Day, and you have luck for the year, you have money for the year, and you have posterity for the year. Different cultures have different uh, foods that they eat for the new year, like pomegranates to noodles to pork. But here in the good old south, uh, black-eyed peas, collard greens, and that good old piece of cornbread uh, is a, a tradition, particularly here at Helen's, uh, every day and every year. Kareem believes that the tradition of one New Year's Day food started with some hard times. History says that uh, during the Civil War, uh, when the Union Army came through, they took everything, but they left the black-eyed peas, so the Confederates thought that it brought them luck and it was a survival meal normally fed to the animals, uh, but it left them with some food to eat, uh, the black eyed peas, so they thought it was luck. And throughout history and tradition, uh, black eyed peas and greens have become a luck and prosperity. Both restaurant owners say good luck or not, the New Year's Day traditional foods are at least healthy for those that eat them. Looks good, Mom. If you're watching this, make sure to send me a plate. The As largest antique, antique mall in Tupelo area marks its anniversary on New Year's Day. Relics Antique is celebrating six years in business and as Ally Martin reports, the business is thriving because of loyal customers and vendors. As Relics Antique Marketplace opened, John Daly was pricing albums from an Elvis collection he recently acquired. Daly owns the EP Boulevard Pawn Shop, the largest dealer of Elvis Presley memorabilia in Memphis. He has had a space at Relics for about five years now. One of the things I like to do here at Relics is bring the history back to Tupelo. So there's a lot of uh, promotional pictures from 56. There's some Elvis trading cards from 56, some of the jewelry. So uh, if you're looking for the early Elvis, this is the place to come in Tupelo. While Daly was pricing and sorting items to sell, Tony Palmer was busy at the cash register. Tony and his wife Heather opened Relics on January 1st, 2017 in the old Tupelo Garment Company building. They lease space to vendors who sell a variety of items. We've got a, a, a great mixture of vintage, handmade, repurposed items, traditional antiques. Um, our motto is we have something for everyone. And there could be some treasures on the shelves. We've had it happen a few times. We had one lady to buy what she thought was a print of her favorite artist for $60. Turns out it was an original sign and it's worth over 10000 When Relics opened its doors six years ago, they had 20 vendors. Now there's 100 with 300 on a waiting list. And the sluggish economy has actually been good for business. The economy has actually helped our business a little bit because people are buying more used items. They can buy used furniture and chalk paint it, and so it's, it's kind of helped us so far. Lewis Rolls owns the Precious Possum and was one of the first vendors at Relics. He says it has been a great fit. It's like a family here. Everybody gets along. Tony and Heather are so dealer friendly. They support us, they do everything they can for us, and that makes it a great place to have, to have a space. Uh, and we all get along. You know, we support each other, we work together, all the vendors do. Relic celebrated its anniversary and the new year with three black-eyed peas and greens, part of a Southern tradition to bring good luck and prosperity. And if the huge crowds on this New Year's Day are any indication, 2024 could be a banner year for relics. Telling your story in Tupelo, Allie Martin, WCBI News. All vendors had specials throughout the day as part of the anniversary celebration. Deals on deals. Coming up, watch me fight through crowds of people trying to get their hands on last minute deals after a popular boutique in Aberdeen announces the closing of their storefront. Stick with us.
Welcome back. A popular boutique in Aberdeen is closing its storefront after 15 years in business. Robin's Unique Boutique announced the plans on social media last week. And the closing means even bigger sales and deals for customers. Well, I witnessed all the craziness and talked to owner Robin Bounds about this decision. Take a look. I'm here in Aberdeen at Robin's Unique Boutique and I'm excited to see what's behind these doors. There are cars lining the highway to grab their last minute deals before they close. Lines of shoppers wrapped around Robin's Unique Boutique for their storefront closing sale. That meant everything had to go and customers were able to get deals as much as 50% off. I mean, it's, I've never had this many people in my store. I've had a lot of busy days, but nothing like this. It's craziness. I know, like, I've already checked out over, like, 300 people, and, like, my line is still just all the way back to the end of the store. So it's just crazy. Kayla Tudor says she was in line for close to two hours to check out. Well, most of mine's behind the register. Uh, I have some jeans and some boots and several things of jewelry. Joanna Hall and her niece Ivy Reynolds got a bag full of goodies and we're still on the hunt for more. We got what would Dolly do necklace and we got some Kinder Scott. Even the youngest shoppers were able to get in on the fun. What have you gotten shopping today? Uh, like the Stanley Cup, house shoes, a necklace, shirt. On the other hand, Maya Gardner shopped till she dropped and was finished for the day. Are we finished shopping for the day or are we going to buy some more stuff? No. Rub employee Anna Neal says they expected to be busy but didn't imagine the crowd would be this big. She was working behind the jewelry counter, helping one customer after another. I mean, we just kind of been running around and trying to help as many people as possible. Um, I've been stuck behind here, mainly like building your story necklaces and picking out which Ronaldo's would look better with whoever. Owner Robin Bounds says after 15 years in business, this was a hard decision to make, but she knew it was the best thing for her and her family. I've been looking at doing this maybe two years now. Bethany was my actual, the reason I did this store. And uh, she actually is ready to be home with her children more. And um, I'm, I'm at the age that I don't want to keep doing it myself. And um, I just, it's really sad because this is my baby. The rub will be transitioning to an online only business in the next few months. But like everyone else, I had to check out a deal or two. Okay, y'all, so I got my stuff. I'm going to hop in line. Just don't tell my bosses I was shopping on the job. 